So, uh, in the previous class, we were dealing with the um, Shabla, the, the introductory page of Tanya, <clears throat> what it's one well on, uh, that the, uh, the short uh, portion underneath the title, Sefer Shal Bainanim, uh, was written uh, by the Alter Rebbe himself and is thus considered um, a uh, brief passage which uh, indicates the Klala Sakavona of the Sefer, the generality, the purpose of the Sefer, uh, the Sefer Tanya. And we, uh, we saw that uh, the Alter Rebbe said he basing the whole of his work on the Pasik in Tvarim, uh, chapter 30, uh, Pasik Yud Dalad, right near the end of the Torah in Pasha Mitzavim, Ki Korev Eilecha Hadova Marei Debeficho Ubilvavcho La Seisei. And we saw that the Alter Rebbe's difficulty, why he needs to write a whole work about this, Levayer Eitev, to explain in a very clear way, Eichu Korev Ma'id. How could it possibly be that this is Korev Ma'id, B'derech Arucha Uktsara Ba'eza Hashem Izbara? And we sort of, <clears throat> what, was, what was the kasha or the difficulty that needs so much explanation? And we suggested that uh, it's well known as a difference of opinion what that Pasik is referring to. Uh, the Ramban holds that it's referring to the Mitzvah Sachuva and so other great uh, Rishonim. Of the Alter Rebbe holds that, uh, that that Pasuk is referring to the whole generality of uh, Torah and Mitzvahs and Yiddishkeit together with Avedis Hashem uh, on the part of the Odom connected with his uh, carrying out Hashem's will for Roman Torah and keeping uh, the Mitzvahs. In other words, it's a union, uh, a matter of clola, of general uh, application, and therefore it's to be understood what to mean by saying that everything in Yiddishkeit, including service of Hashem, is korevelecha adova ma'id. It's tremendously close and within your reach. Beficha ubilvavcha la seisay. Those are the three levels. That we pointed out of um, uh, Dibur, Makshava, and Maisa. But that's not according to the normal Seda that they reckon, but we'll deal with that maybe at another point. However, the main purpose of the Alter Rebbe was to explain Be'er uh, in a very clear explanation how it can be Bilbovcha. Uh, As we will see in Perak Yudzayan, that that seems to be the main difficulty. Uh, that Bilvacha means with the fullness of your heart. And it is well known that um, there are two ways to say heart in Russian Kodesh. One way is Lev or Levov. And it's brought down in the Mishnah right near the end of uh, Masekta Brochus. It's brought down that when we write uh, with two vases at the end of the word Levov, uh, Levov, Levov or Levov Chor, we're referring both to the Nefesh Elokis and to the Nefesh Avamias, or to the Yetzir Teiv and the Yetzir Hora, as they as they refer to in the Mishnah, and we learn from that, uh, says the Mishnah, that it's written in the verse of Krishna, "We all have to as Hashem alakecha bechol levofka with all of your heart, with two vason, meaning that you must uh, serve Hashem both with the Yetzir Teiv and with the Yetzir Hora, and even the Yetzir Hora must come to love of Hashem." That's the implication of the Mishnah. So that would imply that when we use the word Bilavov Chor, that we're talking about both the Yetzir Toiv and the, and the Yetzir Hora, or in the terms of Tanya, the Nefesh Elikis, the divine soul, and the animal soul, the Nefesh Abahamias. And therefore the question being, how can a man come that he's so profoundly committed emotionally and from proper developed emotions in the heart that his whole uh, feeling of being drawn to this world, which is the Nefesh Bahamias, is conquered completely by love of Hashem. And the altar of says in Prayer Kyu Zion that that's a difficult thing to assume that that's just shy to every single Jew 
uh, no matter what time or period he finds himself, to serve Hashem uh, with absolute devotion of his of his middays, particularly the middah of Ahava, of love, to the point that his whole heart is just completely and utterly conquered by love of Hashem, and he has no other desire whatsoever apart from love of Hashem. Uh, what the altar is, is states there in Perek Yud Zion, that that seems to be somewhat against the normal flow of a human personality in our times. And therefore, uh, that seems to be the main difficulty. How do we explain uh, that Yiddishkeit and all of its uh, uh, details are close to us, ma'id, even to the point that we should be able to serve Hashem and carry out all His will, Bilavov with a complete, utter commitment of our heart in the form of Ahavova, Yira, also fear of Hashem in the fullest uh, sense. So we saw that the Alter Rebbe is setting himself out to, do, to, to tell us that, how that's Korib and how it's a very near and close and possible thing for everybody. And we made the, the diuk at the end of the last class. Uh, what does it mean, a long and short way? What, what could that possibly uh, imply? And everything that the Alter Rebbe wrote was so exact and so betachlis uh, hadiyuk with every uh, emphasis on exact expression, then he must mean something in the uh, makeup of the whole Sefer of Tanya with those two expressions that it's a long and a short way to the message which we just described. And therefore we've, we mentioned at the end of the last class the uh, Gemara and Masekta Eiduvin from whence the Old Rabbi takes this expression Derech Arucha Uke Ketzora. And in uh, Masekta Eiduvin, um, Dafnun Gimel Ramad Beis, uh, the Gemara tells there the story of Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanania, that he was, uh, how do you call it, uh, beaten, or he was uh, uh, shown to be more, uh, he was uh, out argued by a young boy. And he came to, he wanted to enter a city, and he came to a, a close to the, or relatively close to the city, and then he saw a parting of ways, and this boy is sitting at the, um, at the where the two roads uh, divided. And he asked uh, what was the best way to the city, and the boy said, well, if you go that way, then it's a derech ketzora aval arucha. And he said, and if you go this way, it's a derech arucha aval ketzora. So Rabbi Yeshua was interested in saving as much time as possible. When he heard the expression ketzora, uh, he took the first path. And he didn't listen to the fact that it was said that it was a ketzora but arucha. So when he got to the city, and almost into the city, he found the all sort of uh, fenced uh, orchards and other things which he couldn't get through. They prevented him, and he would have to go around a big long way in order to get into the actual city itself, even though he had only a short journey to this point. So he went back to the boy, and he said, listen, you, uh, you didn't give me the right instructions. The boy said, oh, yes, I did, Rabbi. He said, I told you that was a Derek Kitsora but a Rucha. And he said, this way is a Derek Rucha, but it's Kitsora. It's a bit longer than that way, but you get into the city and you really find your genuine uh, destination. And Rabbi Yeshua tried that way and he found that that was the case. So, <clears throat> Sidim have always been puzzled over the generations by this expression uh, that the Alter Rebbe's whole savior was to explain us how Korob Me'id what was the implication? So many city over the generation, it's well known. I remember in my uh, younger years uh, when I was learning Tanya, I heard this Pirush and was accepted as quite an authoritative Pirush. And many city said this over, that there are like two sections uh, in the main early part of the Tanya, up to Perigud Zion and included, and then after Perigud Zion from Perigud Ches, up to Perikofo, there are two main uh, sections in Tanya. And the first way is uh, dealing with the uh, Arifa, says Bonin is a, a bain and he knows he has a brain power and he has the ability to uh, be, uh, reflect and meditate by re at, at great length on, on uh, Elakus and through that to bring the understanding from his brain down through all the, the, the difficulties uh, that face it to reach his heart and to arouse genuine uh, emotional feelings in the heart 
according to what he was reflecting on, according to the theme of the, his bonanness of the meditation and reflection. And the altar of his stress is that that takes a long time. Both in periods of time, a person doesn't achieve that properly in one day, and also during the actual his bonanness, he has to give a, a great deal of, of time and koyach. He can't just expect to have it in a minute. But on the contrary, he points out in Paragimo that you, if you just have immediate midas and you think you've already produced av of a year of Hashem from a brief is bonus, then it's uh, it's demyonis uh, because it's just imagine that it's miragic uh, uh, falsities. That's what he calls it the altar. So therefore, that's talking about Abena. All, all those uh, chapters are talking about Abena who goes in a long way. <coughs> to reach what he is eventually supposed to reach. And then he becomes a full brain and he, through having the midas in their full revelation, he's then able to fight his uh, left side of his heart and all the uh, trials of the Etahara, and he reaches the point of being a complete uh, brain. From Perik Yudches up until Perik Kavol, uh, the Alter Rebbe deals with uh, the, uh, what you might call the case or the problem of a person who's not able to, he doesn't have enough deep knowledge to really be misbeen and to reflect and, and think uh, long, at length and deeply uh, in matters of divinity. Or secondly, <coughs> even if he does, uh, he can't sort of affect his heart. It, it's difficult for him to change himself uh, in that way. And therefore the altar of comforts him by saying that nonetheless it's still possible for him to reach all the perfection of a Bainani and to have a, a very profound control over himself which also arouse his emotions in a slightly different way and with that he presents us with a whole different picture of somebody who would picture to himself just how much he would be prepared to give himself away and even his life for the sake of the oneness of Hashem and <clears throat> how that there's no doubt in his mind that he he believes intensely to the point of himself nervous about oneness of Hashem and how every Aveda, even a small Aveda that a person does, is like being uh, uh, Pogea, how do you say the word Pogea? It's like impinging on the oneness, absolute uh, oneness of Hashem and it's like a admittance of, God forbid, a false service of Aveda, of Aveda Zara and how a person would never allow himself to do Aveda Zara under any circumstances. Uh, uh, so he has to appreciate that every Aveda is a form of uh, admitting to Aveda Zara. And that's a different type of his bonds altogether, a much briefer, more intense, more uh, uh, limited and centered his bondness, uh, which in the Hemshik Basilagani, the Freya de Karebe, uh, in the last Hemshik which he gave out to be studied, he talks at the early part of that Hemshik in detail about this type of his bondness. So that's called a, a shorter way. So the Siddim used to say, but there's Arucha, one way, there's Kitsora, was another way. Uh, the way from Perik Yudches till uh, uh, Perikopov. Meaning, there was like two different uh, sections of the Tanya. One was Arucha and one was Kitsora. Until, that was all fine, until the Rebbe came along in one of the years, I think it was in the late Lamans or the early uh, Toshin Mems, uh, that the Rebbe said a very famous uh, Sikha which is printed in uh, one of the volumes of the Lakuta Sikhas uh, in Pasha Kisobe, uh, not uh, long before Rosh Hashanah, uh, I think it was a Pasha Nitzobim, but the, the Rebbe dismissed that whole theory. That that's not, he said, he reached a conclusion, it's not what the Alter Rebbe meant. Uh, he said that from, if we go to the Gemara where the Alter Rebbe got that phrase from, then we see that it's all one thing, that the Dera Haruka Ukitsora is one thing. It's like a, a long way, but it's really short. Or the other way, it's a short way, but it's really long. So the Rebbe said it's not two separate ways, but it's all one way, which has got in itself both advantages. It's both uh, Aruka and Kitsora. So the Rebbe said that, uh, that with that, the Alter Rebbe was referring to the whole Shitta of Chabad and the whole way and the whole derech of Siddhas Chabad based on the great source work of Tanya. And what, it, what the Rebbe explained was that when people hear about Chabad and they hear about studying deeply all the inner meanings of the uh, inner 
teachings of the Torah, and they hear about the Sphiris Elienus and the Oedemus Elienim, and uh, the greatness of Hashem and the oneness of Hashem, but all in tremendous detail and based on Kabbalistic uh, values and teachings. They think, you know, this is a little bit long, you know, what does a person need to learn all that for? It's all uh, a very, uh, you know, lengthy and somewhat uh, demanding and somewhat uh, um, uh, over demanded uh, demand on the person to study uh, such a deep way and to know about uh, divinity in such a way. And over the altar, the altar Rabbi stresses that that's like the second way that uh, Rabbi Yeshua Hanani went on. It's Sakya Derech Arucha, Inochanami, there's a lot of effort, you have to learn all sorts of things, but if you go that way, you reach what you really need to reach. And you don't have any problems towards the end when you're really getting to your destination, then you get there. And that's a direct way, ultimately, that, that you need to put in all that effort in order to get directly and properly to your, get your goal. But if you go in the short way, you never really reach the city. You always end up with the, the Nefesh Abamis and the Eitzahara just taking their, their toll of you very much as they did at the start. And therefore, uh, even though just to learn briefly about things and spiritual matters uh, uh, and be satisfied with that may seem to be a much more sensible way to do things, but ultimately it doesn't lead uh, to the city. This was the, uh, the Rebbe's famous principle, and therefore he said that derech, uh, the secret of the altar Rebbe is derech arucha uketzora, is the way of Chabad in general, and particularly as brought out in Tanya and all the knowledge that it goes on the Tanya to deal with uh, in great length, and not only in the, in the first section, but also in Shara Yuchud and Igeras Hachuva. In reference to Igeras Hachuva, the author Rabbi also wrote the same way. He's coming to explain all the Indian of Inyonim of Chuva, but Dera Harucha Ukitsar. So from that we see that he saw the whole shit of Chokma Binada, the whole shit of Lubavitch and Chabad, to be that Indian of Arucha, but Ketsar. It demands a lot, and sometimes it's a bit uh, worrying to understand well, you know, why do I need to go into all this but once you do and as we saw the, the very uh, striking example of saying that uh, in Russia where there were the most terrible trials on Yiddishkeit the people who stood firm and the, the, barri the, the banner carriers of Yiddishkeit and those who ultimately broke the strength of, uh, of the whole Russian regime which was the Friedrich Rebbe's unbelievable stand he knew based on us with Dafke the Chassidic Chabad, Dafke the Koyach of Lubavitch and of Chabad, that they uh, learnt all these uh, uh, things that people said, what do you need to learn all that for? And Dafke, they were the ones who came to Masir's Nefesh and to this union of uh, absolute, uh, unquestionable devotion uh, to Yiddishkeit. So we see that it all, uh, it all adds up together. And it all comes a little bit back to what we spoke last night uh, in the Shia Kolya, that maybe that's a little bit misleading to refer to that. But with what Rashi said and what the Rebbe said about that, Amelim Batoira, that Amelim means beyond uh, the ordinary powers of the soul. But it means Chai Yechida, it means that power beyond ourselves which links ourselves up with Hashem. Beyond. So even though the old Rebbe talks about all sorts of things which are the, uh, the ordinary powers of the soul, and their effort and the, what has to be done with them. But through that, and hidden in the lines, he's leading you up into uh, uncommitted, uh, adequate, un unquestionable and unlimited commitment to Belakuz in a way which is a rucha, but it's ultimately Ketsa. So that's uh, what uh, we wanted briefly to explain in that famous uh, little portion of the Alter Rebbe himself. And now uh, I want to go over to page um, uh, number, uh, I, I think in the English, it's, I don't know what page it is in, in the English, maybe it's uh, page XIV, uh, XIV is 14, maybe, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> probably um, page uh, 3 or 4 in the English, approbation it's called. And here it's well known that the Alter Rebbe worked for 20 years uh, on the Sefer Hatanya to prepare it in a way that he, he would be satisfied with it. It took him 20 years. And uh, it began, the Alter Rebbe's writing and drawing up of the Sefer Hatanya began uh, shortly after the Stalkas of the uh, Mesritcha Margit and took 
um, a long, long time, uh, uh, almost up to the point that he was arrested and sent to uh, Leningrad, um, uh, sent to Petersburg uh, on the uh, terrible uh, imprisonment which led to the great uh, triumph of Yudhis Kislev. Uh, and however, the author went through two uh, sort of general stages that due to his great modesty, uh, the author didn't want to print his work uh, at the beginning. So the Hasidim, however, begged that he should give them uh, the work. So the author gave it out to copiers, to all sorts of copiers, to copy out and spread it around amongst the, the different communities of the city. But copiers are only human beings, they're not computers, and, and uh, even computers can make mistakes, I understand. There's then a, a lot of mistakes and a lot of you know, uh, Hashmotas, things were left out, little words were left out, people didn't realize the significance of a, of a comma or things like this. So after a while, uh, the elder we saw that having just given it to people to copy wasn't effective and a, a great number of mistakes and uh, misunderstandings as to his real purpose had occurred. And therefore, ultimately, the Rebbe had no choice but to decide to uh, revi revise all the manuscripts and then have them uh, printed uh, in a base of food. However, before going to print, before actually giving them to the base of food, the elder Rebbe wanted to get uh, the approbation, which is called Haskoma in, in Hebrew, of two of his great colleagues uh, and friends, and very devoted friends, uh, from his studies by the Mezritsha Magi. And they are Rabbi uh, Mushulam Zushia Me Anipolia and the Rabbeinu Yehuda Leiv HaKoyen, also for, he lived in the city of Anipolia, but he lived on the other side of a bridge, on one side of the town, and Rabbi Zushia lived on uh, the other side. Now Rabbi Zushia was a very, very saintly and tremendously humble, uh, uh, unbelievably um, gifted uh, from Hashem, blessed from Hashem person. And he uh, held from the Alter Rebbe uh, uh, very, very much. He, he respected and was and was uh, devoted to the Alter Rebbe very highly. And that was a, um, uh, a mutual that the Alter Rebbe held worlds from uh, Rabbi Zusha. To the point that the Alter Rebbe once uh, said to uh, many people that he said that the uh, the Goen Hoamiti, the genuine uh, Gaon of all of us by the, the Magi was Reb Zushia. And his point being that Reb Zushia only used to say from the same place whether the, the Gemara or the Yerushalmi or whatever they were talking about, but wherever the Yerushalmi got it from, then Reb Zushia got it from the same place. In other words, that everything he said was a divine inspiration in his learning. That's what the Alter Rebbe felt about Reb Zushia. And Reb Zushia felt likewise about uh, the Alter Rebbe and uh, respected him unbelievably. And the same with this Rebbe Yehuda Leib Hakoyhain, that he was also an immensely great person. But we don't know a great deal about the life of uh, Rebbe Yehuda Leib Hakoyhain, as we do about Reb Zushia much, because he and uh, the Rebbe Malik Muzians, they were brothers. Uh, the Reb Zusha and the Rebelli Malik, and they both became Talmudim of the Magid. And there's many works that have been written about them and their, their Torah and everything. But the Rebelli of Akon, he wrote a great sefer called the Ur Hagonus, the Hidden Light. And it's a very amazing, and he also wrote a Pirish on the Mishnayas. But he wrote a Baderach HaKabolim, not a not Baderach HaPshat. It's very amazing. <laughs> also, his work on the Chumash is, is very sort of esoteric. It's um, more Baderach HaSod. Uh, Akabola, he was a, a very, very amazing person, hidden and uh, full of uh, sanctity. And uh, he was very close friends with uh, Rav Zusha and with the altar, altar. So the altar said he cannot print the Tanya until he gets the uh, appropriation or approbation from Rav Zusha and, uh, and the Rav Yudalei Akoyin. Now to give you just some idea of their, their greatness, at the time of the Stalkers of the Magid, when the Magid actually passed away, then the Alter Rebbe was with him, he was uh, alongside the Magid. Uh, and so was uh, Reb Zusha came in, and the Magid inquired where was Reb Zusha. He wanted uh, Reb Zusha to be there, and he, he came, Reb Zusha came, and the Rabbina Yudalei Bakoyan was there, and uh, the son of the Magid, his great son, the Rebbe Avram Hamala, he also came in, and he was there. And uh, the... Um, the 
the, the Magid required that, or inquired especially about Rabbi Zushi if he was there, and he inquired especially about Rabbi Yudalei Akoyan, and he knew the altar of his there because he'd been there from before with him, and uh, he said certain things to his son, to the Rabbi Omar, but they were very amazing, but I, if I went to them now with them, we wouldn't continue with our theme. And uh, then he turned to all the people who were there, and he said uh, that uh, um, you must make very sure to listen carefully to Rabbi Zalman Yud. Uh, he used to call the altar Rabbi Zalman Yud. It's like an uh, affectionate uh, abbreviation of Shnel Zalman. And he said, you must listen to my Zalman Yud. And he said that everything he says, the altar Rabbi, is like a small prophecy, and that uh, you must always listen and do what he will tell you. That's, that's what he told all, all these uh, great people uh, about the Alter Rebbe just before his passing. Uh, we can see the unbelievable respect that there was between all these people one uh, for the other. So, uh, the Alter Rebbe sent three of his great Hasidim with the um, copies of the manuscript, uh, one for Rebbe Yudlai Bikon and one for Rebbe Zushim Yanipoli, over to the city of Anipoli on this particular day, that they must bring back uh, the uh, uh, probations of these two great men for the Seif Tanya. So uh, these three great cities were very great people. One was called the Rabinchus Mishlov, uh, Mishklov, I'm sorry. He was called um, Rabinchus Razors, and he was a great, great cousin of the Alter Rebbe, and the Alter Rebbe loved him very much. And he was always with the Alter Rebbe. He was very, very remarkable. And then there was another great man called Rabbi Moshe Vilenke, and uh, there are actually people today, I think, some of them lived in Kachabara one time, that they were descended from him, they were descended from Moshe Vilenke. And uh, it's also another great uh, Chosid Rabbi uh, Yitzchok Moshe Miyayshu. He was called the Rabbi uh, Moshe Yayshu. And he was also amazing stories about him uh, from the Alter Rebbe. He became like a sort of a spy towards Napoleon, because the Alter Rebbe was very against Napoleon. He did the most amazing things for the Alter Rebbe in regards to Napoleon. The, uh, this absolute, you know, he just put himself in absolute circonis and uh, all because the altar ever wanted it. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, so the, these were three great people, and they took... Uh, was he the translator for Napoleon? I'm sorry? Was he the translator for Napoleon? He, he acted as a spy. Uh -huh. And I can tell you the story maybe after I can tell it, but uh, if I go into it now, then we won't. Uh, it's a quite a long story. So anyway, as... Um, uh, they come and they bring the manuscripts, one to Rabbi Zusha, and one to Reb, uh, and they decided they have to leave at least one night with them, because it's, it's a very, uh, Tanya is a very complicated work. So uh, they said, look, we'll leave it to, uh, for a night and you'll study it and you'll see what you want to, what you want to say. So uh, Rabbi Zusha started studying the Tanya and he was so affected, so uh, taken by that he couldn't hold himself together, he just became his emotions just completely burst out of his whole system. And he said he must find somebody to tell them what he feels, you know. He must converse with somebody about this unbelievable work, this unbelievable thing which is happening from Reb Zalman. You know, so. so he said, well, oh, I'm going to go over to see Reb Yudalev, because he lives on the other side of the bridge, and I'll go over to see him, and I'll tell him. So Rabbi Yudalev Kohen, he was studying the Tanya, and he got into the same thing. He, he just couldn't hold himself back from Rob. And these are the great men. You know. He couldn't hold himself back. And he said, I must talk with somebody about this. I'm going to go to Rabbi Zushi. So in, in the middle of the dark night in a, in a Russian town, he got these two great figures start going up onto the bridge, and they met in the middle of the... They met in the middle of the bridge, and they went to a tremendous dance together. They were so happy that they couldn't say anything one to the other, but they just went for a tremendous dance. And then afterwards, after they'd finished dancing, they each said something about the Tanya. And the, uh, the, the Reb Zushia, uh, he said, the Medem Sefer, but Mengayin and Kegin Moshia. With this Sefer, we're going to go to meet Moshia. And Reb Yudaleva uh, he said that this Sefer is the Keteris, it's the... Uh, it's the Keteru, you know, the uh, incense that was offered in the Beis Amikdash, which is going to get rid of all the diseases before Moshiach. In other words, it, you know that uh, when there was a, a big plague in Pasha Shlachach, in, in Sefer Bermidba, that uh, Aaron, in Pasha Kurach, I'm sorry, Aaron uh, 
Aaron Akrin took the uh, incense and he ran into the, to the midst of the people where the plague was and everybody was healed from the incense. So uh, Rabbi Lebekon said the Tanya is the incense that's going to heal all the maladies before Moshiach. So we see that he spoke about how Tanya was going to bring and pre prepare us for Moshiach. Rabbi Zushi was already talking about when sorry. You know, ready to go out to meet Moshe, and he said, "This is going to give us the power to go out and meet Moshe. We're going to bring the safe and show it to Moshe." So they both spoke about two different uh, aspects of the coming of uh, Moshe, and they did this tremendous dance on the uh, on the bridge, uh, holding the, the manuscripts of the safe uh, Hatan. And so then, uh, after that, each of them wrote his uh, approbation, and God willing, in the coming class. Uh, we'll go into some detail just briefly because there are all sorts of uh, very beautiful um, uh, indications in their words of, uh, of the, the status of the Sefer Tanya, the Baal Shem Tov and the Magi and also it's, it's amazing. Uh, what, so we'll deal with that briefly, God willing. We won't spend a huge amount of time going through the whole thing, but we'll go through it. Uh, that's, that's the custom by Siddim and God willing in the coming year, uh, that's, uh, that's what we'll do. So, uh, uh, everybody should have a good luck, Bahima, and uh, we want Moshe.